Professor Fakrul Alam about English, but how? And he's going to present in English, I think. I agree with Shakwat uh, completely. I think that uh, the phrasing of this conference, uh, of this uh, seminar, or whatever you call it, is very unfortunate. It is going to create, it's, it, it's meant to be provocative and incendiary. It was not necessary at all uh, to title a seminar called English, Bengali, or both. Personally, I studied in English medium schools. I've taught in English all my life. But I have no doubt that in Bangladesh, it should be Bengali and not English. And <laughs> Bengali, perhaps it should have been titled Bengali, English, and something like that, on the state of Bengali and English education. This will uh, earn cheap applause. And you can talk in a very rhetorical, fiery way. To, and it's, it's a very emotive topic. But I think it's totally unnecessary to create this. Uh, I've taught in, as all of you know, I've taught in Dhaka University for 42 years. I'm now in a private university. In Dhaka University, all the departments taught in Bengali. Uh, you know, I, I, after, after uh, 69, now perhaps there are a few departments using English. And in the English department, we used English, of course. And uh, this is the way it has been. And it's perfectly acceptable. And we have flourished. The Dhaka University has not done badly. Our students have not ba done badly at all. So why create an opposition when there is none? I would like to begin uh, with that. I'd also like to tell you, again, on a personal note, that I've been in uh, Kashmir. I came back uh, day before yesterday evening. I went to a conference. It was a five-day conference. And when you go to India, you realize, because in India, English has a separate function from Bangladesh. It is a link language. And most of the scholars, uh, the conference was on literature and the environment, but there were scholars from other disciplines. There were scholars from the social sciences also and uh, other branches, philosophy, for example. And the deliberations uh, were in English. Everybody was competent in English. Uh, they were most of them, very few from English medium institutions. Most of them were from um, institutions in vernacular. There were people from uh, the south. There were people from the east. There were people from the west. But the standard of English was something which was very impressive for me. And uh, is that while I agree with Shakwat completely, and I think Shakwat also says this, I, I've looked at uh, Salimullah's slide, and Salimullah also, uh, after the uh, you know, perversion that he sees in English education. I think at one point he also says this. The point that we sh I should be talking about is, you know, the, uh, the way we teach English. So uh, even though I didn't title this, I think it's Shaila who titled my paper English but how. I send the, uh, I, I send, I send the um, abstract from my mobile phone while in Kashmir, uh, you know, I, 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 and so I somehow managed an abstract. But I think what concerns me as an English teacher who has taught here and is really concerned about the state of English in our country is the way English is taught, uh, in wherever it is taught. And uh, to me, English should be taught as a second language because it is an essential sec session, second language. And while there's no doubt that Bangla should be taught at every level, including the level of higher education, the standard of it, English should be high and not low. So English should not suffer at all because of that. I think that nationalism uh, has its limitations. I remember in, uh, 19, in the 1970s uh, when a Bengali professor of our university wrote an article, uh, probably in Ittafak, I can't remember where, where he said, uh, we have uh, no doubt that Bengali, Bengali should be the language of instruction. What we should really uh, question is whether we should have English or whether we should have French or whether we should have Spanish. And to me, even now, it seems like such a foolish statement. Again, an emotive statement uh, meant to earn applause. Could we have done away with English altogether? Could we have, if we wanted to, use Spanish as an option or French as an option? Uh, because if you had done that, you would have to start anew. And if you continued with English, continued to build on the English that we had, then we would have 200 years of English language teaching that we could use uh, uh, for uh, our, our students. I would also like to point out that sometimes you create false oppositions. Teaching English has never harmed Bengali. 
the Bengali uh, language as we know it, uh, we know from the 19th century, from the Bengali Renaissance, has only uh, prospered because of its association with English and people like the Tagore family uh, who had embraced English but were nationalistic and always uh, emphasized the use of Bengali at all levels. In other words, uh, there's no point in creating false oppositions. If we have strong English language policies, uh, you know, of course, our students will benefit from it at every level. Our literature will also limit, uh, benefit from it. Uh, name any outstanding Bengali writer, and you'll realize that that Bengali writer has a lot of English. Uh, sometimes I've heard Nozul being instanced, but to me, it is doing Nozul a disfavor because we know, if you read Nozul, you know that he had read Whitman, he had read Bob Hopkins, he had read the, uh, you know, read, read quite a bit, quite extensively in English. So uh, one of the things that I have heard over the years is whether we should have, uh, whether we should have English at all, or uh, speeches which downgrade English at every level. What I would like to emphasize, therefore, is that we should have, of course, Bengali as the medium of ins instruction. Uh, <coughs> 47 years after our independence, there can be no doubt about that. Uh, English should be taught at every level. We cannot enforce it at, in private universities. Why does that matter? You know, we can't enforce it in English medium schools, but why does that matter? How many English medium schools do we have? If you really count all over the cu country, very few. How many students graduate from them? Who are the people get getting jobs in government administration? Who are the people who are becoming ministers? They're all Bengali. Uh, uh, speaking, they have all had Bengali at all level. Now, if you want to drive English out from English medium, uh, in, 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 in private universities where they have English, you'll have to change the whole social system. It's not something that anyone can do easily. You'll have to completely um, uh, create a state where um, everybody is forced to do everything the same way. And if you can do that, then you can talk about uh, you know, using English and no other language. Since you can't do that, I think that since we have our public universities, since we have our public school system, since Bangla is being taught at every level, the question that is much more interesting, uh, uh, not interesting, much more relevant, is if we are going to have a second language, and if English is going to be that second language, why, how should that second language be taught? That is what I'm really interested in, and I don't want to, uh, you know, create any false oppositions in any way. Here, I think that our English language teaching <coughs> has gone from bad to worse. And it has gone from bad to worse because of successive policy decisions uh, be, um, uh, uh, from all kinds of people. It, it, uh, in the 70s, uh, English was uh, marginalized. It was left out, uh, and, 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 and it, it was taught at a later stage from class four or five. And uh, it, was, it didn't affect people because the people who were learning it weren't that affected because the pedagogy was intact. The English language teaching pedagogy was intact. Teachers could still teach reasonably well. Uh, I think that the real problem started in the 80s when in the degree colleges English was eliminated. And this meant that people who graduated <coughs> from degree colleges no longer had English, and they, would, they were the ones who were going to teach English in schools. And because of that, I think the school education <coughs> English system suffered. And the next uh, blow to me that came was from ELT, because ELT to me is a completely, um, you know, it, it is something manufactured so that you can teach easy English or basic English or functional English in small doses, but to teach it, you have to completely depend on imported pedagogy. So you had to take students to English universities because English universities were at that time uh, and Australian and, 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 and uh, New Zealanders later joined in this. They, they had to uh, support themselves because of, because of Thatcher and uh, economic policy which, uh, policies which were adopted at that time. Everybody had to uh, generate their own money. And so they had to sell these capsule courses, attract students from abroad, and then uh, export the pedagogy so that the demand came. Now, I'm not saying ELT is bad. In fact, I think ELT is very useful because the, uh, it has so much to teach uh, as far as pedagogy is concerned. The problem seems to me that the language teaching which was in place 
was then marginalized. Uh, for example, the grammar translation method. In the 80s and the 90s, ELT came and said that the grammar translation is bad, you know, and, and the grammar translation should be out. There should be a, a, a different kind of communicative teaching. Now, th this meant that 200 years of experience accumulated through grammar translation was suddenly considered to be useless. Now, Rovinath's name has come up, and uh, since I am very devoted to Rovinath and I uh, I'm a student of Rabindranath and I want to learn much more. If you look at Rabindranath, we'll find out that Rabindranath himself uh, use, has, has English primers for his school. Uh, for his school, he had English primers and he uh, emphasized translation as an essential activity. And if you actually talk to students who have graduated from Shantinikadan school, you realize how good their English is, how solid their pedagogy is. Someone in class four or five who are, they are learning Bengali, but their English is quite good at that level and they get better and better at that time. So it seems to me that uh, English was not only marginalized, English teaching was suddenly uh, you know, given a new, it was transformed in such a way that the accumulated experience was lost. And that wasn't so very good. And then, uh, to make things worse, we have, in, 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 in this uh, century, in this new millennium, in this century, we have a multiple choice, multiple uh, you know, um, uh, 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 systems of examination, uh, tutoring at every level, and basically no one learns Bengali or English. The chairman of the UGC was talking about how pathetic the state of Bengali language learning is in our country, and if, you, if, the, if the state of Bengali language learning is bad, the state of uh, English learning is much worse. So what is happening now is that we are getting students, I've been getting students, you know, I, I, I left Dhaka University last year, that, who are increasingly worse in English and quite poor in Bangla. And as a in, university teacher of English, I had to tell my students, and of course, you have to speak in English and you have to use English properly if you're going to get jobs. Because, and, and then the bottom line is jobs. Um, Shakwat said it's all very well to say that you, know, you teach for knowledge. Uh, of course you teach for knowledge, but uh, no student is going to just study for knowledge alone. University education, whether you like it or not, has gone beyond that state where you just teach for knowledge. In fact, it was never for knowledge. Uh, in the previous generation, people uh, learned subjects uh, I went to the English department because I wanted to be CSP. Other people went to the English department because they, uh, to the economics department because they wanted to be a CSP. Now my students in Dhaka University's English department come because they want to be magistrates, they want to go into the foreign service and so on. So uh, it's very good to be idealistic, but I think it's very unfair to your students because your idealism is not what they want. Uh, they want jobs and we'll have to make our English language teaching and our Bengali teaching uh, you know, adapt to that. In fact, for example, I, I try to talk to my colleagues in the Bengali department, the ones I know, the ones I like very much, and one of the things I've tried to tell them, uh, which they didn't listen to, I even, I, I've even given them books, is that they should teach composition to Bengali students. Because composition is, it, is, is something which can be taught. Whereas in our country, both in Bangla and in English, composition is not taught. How do students learn essays? They memorize it. They never learn how to write an essay. They never learn how to write paragraphs, that there are techniques for writing paragraphs, that there are techniques for transition. They never learn that. In other words, what I'm saying is that instead of rhetoric, instead of you know, saying things which are impractical, uh, which can get a lot of applause, let us transform both our English language teaching and our Bengali language teaching. Bengali should be the only language of higher instruction, except in the English department. Uh, but the English teaching should improve substantially. And even Bengali, uh, the teaching at the board, you know, in our board, the kind of examinations that are being given is not good for language teaching at all. It's not good for anything. So if you're going to examine and overhaul, the examination and the overhaul should be much deeper <coughs> than it is now. So the debate that I've heard, I've looked at Salimullah's um, uh, slides also, uh, Shaila's slide also, I would say 
are in a as, as uh, I, I think they are valuable but I think using words like perverse uh, or uh, trying to knock down English I think that's not the point the point is we need to teach both Bengali and English Bengali number one English as a second language but we need to rethink our pedagogy and seminars and conferences should be devoted to thinking of ways of improving uh, uh, the English and the, the Bengali and the English teaching at all levels, from the board to the university. With those words, I'd like to conclude. Thank you.